Salve a tutti, io sono Graziano Graziani, sono qui per introdurre una delle conversazioni del Teatro di Roma attorno ai protagonisti della stagione, ne abbiamo due, eh, che sono Arne Ligre, eh, che saluto, hi Arne, thank you for being with us, e, e, drammaturgo norvegese molto conosciuto in Europa e mh, stiamo scoprendo, diciamo, anche da noi in Italia, eh, grazie tra gli altri al lavoro di Giacomo Bisordi, che è appunto in stagione che porta in scena a ottobre fino al 25 eh, Uomo senza meta, uno dei testi di Arne Ligre. Giacomo Bisordi è appunto con noi e Fausto Paravidino che ringraziamo moltissimo per aver accettato di far parte di questa conversazione perché Fausto oltre ad essere eh, uno dei drammaturghi più rappresentativi della scrittura italiana all'estero ha studiato in un prestigioso eh, master a Londra proprio con Arne Ligre vent'anni fa quindi in qualche modo si conoscono, hanno intrecciato i loro percorsi eh, umani quindi sarà interessante ascoltarli dialogare sulla drammaturgia oggi in Europa, su quello che significa il loro lavoro. Cominciamo con una piccola introduzione in italiano e poi passeremo all'inglese, di modo tale che eh, tutti riusciamo a comunicare. E chiedo subito, cominciando eh, da Giacomo Bisordi, l'incontro artistico con Arne Ligre e di, appunto, di raccontarcelo, poi faremo la stessa domanda anche a Fausto e dopo cominceremo la conversazione in inglese con Arne. Giacomo. Buongiorno, Beh, eh, potrei dire che Arne Ligre mi è stato tirato addosso, nel senso che proprio a questa primavera, parlando con eh, Giorgio Barberio Corsetti, che mi aveva chiesto una, un progetto per, per un'ipotesi di riapertura del palco dell'Argentina, mi ha fatto una rosa di, di proposte, di autori, ehm, tra cui c'era un autore che io, di cui avevo eh, sentito parlare tramite alcuni amici di Intercity Festival, di, appunto il festival che si fa in Toscana al Limonaia che ormai un po' di anni fa frequentavo e c'era appunto questo nome Arne Ligre di cui io eh, conoscevo limitatamente alcune cose e in qualche modo un lavoro della memoria rispetto a quanto ricordassi mi ha portato ad andare subito verso quel, eh, quel nome e, e il buon Corsetti che eh, è stato un grande fan ed è tuttora un grande fan di Ligre perché l'ha conosciuta a sua volta in Francia, eh, mi ha provato a sedurre abbastanza rapidamente proponendomi tutta una serie di suoi testi e l'ho sbatacchiato subito, per questo dico mi è stato tirato addosso, perché subito mi è arrivato eh, il testo di Uomo Senza Meta che in questa forma, in questa forma francese, che mi è, che mi è stato regalato e quindi è stato fondamentalmente un incontro come spesso accade, cioè quasi come posso dire, eh, imprevisto, perché fondamentalmente non apparteneva minimamente a, a quelle che potrebbero essere i miei orizzonti, essendo io anche incapace di, di scegliere, ho bisogno che le cose mi vengano un po' tirate addosso. Però ehm, da lì, devo dire, è nato subito un, un certo tipo di, uso una parola veramente ter, tremenda, però è nato subito un certo tipo di amore per quel tipo di scrittura, perché eh, quel tipo di, uso un termine adesso anche questo abbastanza eh, ovvio e, però penso che non sia offensiva. Quel tipo di minimalismo in termini di scrittura è qualcosa con cui io non mi ero mai eh, neppure confrontato, non sapevo neppure come si potesse mettere in scena, perché c'erano tutta una serie di elementi proprio a partire proprio dal tipo di drammaturgia che mi, in qualche modo mi sembravano, eh, per, e mi sembrano tuttora per me, estremamente difficili da, da gestire. Quindi è partita subito una componente anche di, come spesso accade, di eccitazione rispetto a questo tipo di problema scenico. Cioè, come si fa a portare in scena una scrittura del genere su un palco grosso come quello dell'Argentina? Però, al di là di quello, c'è anche proprio un, una caratteristica di uomo senza meta che, devo dire, eh, tutt'oggi, all come dire, proprio all'alba della ripresa delle prove, per adesso per l'andata in scena di ottobre, continua ad affascinarmi. Cioè, eh, non è solo un discorso di capacità di sintesi, di scrittura, ma è la capacità di sintetizzare più livelli in, eh, con estrema facilità, nel senso che c'è una componente estremamente privata, c'è cioè una storia che è apparentemente è una storia familiare, che improvvisamente, immediatamente può essere letta come una crudelissima favola politica, come una sorta di parabola. E non a caso si parte come se fosse con una citazione abbastanza spudorata del Vangelo, secondo Matteo, e quindi della parabola in qualche modo la struttura, in qualche modo un eco di quelli che erano poi i drammi allegorici, diciamo, del, del 1500. Quel tipo di, 
di capacità di muoversi su più livelli, un livello che è estremamente privato, domestico, ma al tempo stesso di diventare anche un discorso estremamente politico, è quello che almeno per me è quello che subito mi ha, mi ha, mi ha preso, ma travolto, perché in qualche modo mi, ha, eh, mi sembrava anche la cosa più che sentivo più come posso dire, più anche intrigante fare nel momento di un'ipotesi di riapertura come era quella appunto di giugno e adesso anche di, di ottobre. Passiamo allora a Fausto e poi faremo una piccola sintesi per Arne. Fausto, tu con Arne, quando, quando vi siete incontrati, ci vuoi raccontare brevemente questo incontro e poi passiamo alla chiacchierata con lui? Sì, certo, naturalmente. In Horn ci siamo conosciuti a Londra, all'International Residence del Royal Court nel, nel 2000, <ride> che era una situazione molto bella, molto interessante, una specie di, di gita scolastica per drammaturghi, nel senso che eravamo un, un gruppo di 23, mi pare, 24 tra drammaturghi e registi, pochi registi, 4 o 5, il resto tutti quanti playwright. E... Abitavamo insieme, lavoravamo insieme, lavoravamo insieme tutto il giorno, incontrando, facendo dei workshop più o meno lunghi con, con registi inglesi e con, con scrittori inglesi. Abbiamo lavorato con con Declan Donovan, con uh, Kit Mitchell, uh, con uh, Martin Crane, con Mark Ravenhill, uh, con Harold Pinter, con uh, David Hare, uh, <ride> uh, insomma con uh, tutto il teatro inglese vivente all'epoca e, 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 e molto, è molto tra di noi. Non, la, la cosa, il, il peccato diciamo era che eh, che, che all'epoca noi non abbiamo conosciuto le pièce degli altri, il, il lavoro degli altri, stavamo insieme nel, nel workshop per cui conoscevamo la scrittura istantanea, quello che stavamo facendo lì per lì, ma non quello che avevamo scritto prima. E siamo andati a teatro insieme, abbiamo giocato insieme alla formazione di, di un gusto collettivo, vedevamo uno spettacolo al giorno e discutevamo di quello che vedevamo, bevevamo tantissime birre la sera, tantissimi caffè la mattina e, e tutto. E, e poi, poi quindi siamo entrati nel mondo immaginario l'un dell'altro lavorando insieme, non leggendoci, per cui in teatro, letteralmente in teatro, lavoravamo dentro un teatro, appunto dentro, dentro la corte, nella Jadot Theatre Upstairs della, della Royal Court. E poi, dopo, poi dopo è finita, poi dopo è finita, ognuno è tornato a casa sua, eravamo autori di paesi diversi, non di tutti i paesi del mondo, no, non tutti perché eravamo 20, però... Eh, eh, e poi dopo ho avuto modo quindi di, di conoscere le pièce di Orna. Ci siamo scritti, non ci siamo mai più rivisti fino, fino ad ora. E, e poi ho avuto modo di conoscere il lavoro di, di Orna, leggendolo e vedendolo, vedendolo in seguito, soprattutto, al, soprattutto in Francia, dove lui è molto, molto rappresentato, è stato dei suoi lavori di Sessione da, da Braunschweig. E, e mi piace molto come scrive, penso che abbiamo anche dei, dei tratti in comune, anche se i nostri paesi sono così diversi, e così diversa è la densità di popolazione e, e il clima, ma mi, mi riconosco molto nel suo modo di, di, guardare, di guardare tutto il mondo attraverso delle piccole relazioni familiari che lo riguarda con un microscopio molto spinto. Grazie Fausto, so let's uh, switch in English. Uh, Arne, we... Hello. Hello, thank you for Hi. being with us. Oh. Uh, we discovered with uh, Giacomo uh, that, um, you know, the challenge for him uh, is uh, to, 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 to bring your, um, your place uh, and your style on a very traditional uh, stage as Teatro Argentina. Uh, Giacomo told about this and... Uh, about uh, the artistic director, Giorgio Barberio Rossetti, that is a huge fan of you. Uh, so it's a challenge for us 
And uh, at the same time, Fausto Bravidino talk about the differences between our countries. You come from the north, we are from the south, but some part of, your, of both of you as a playwright, uh, for Fausto, it's uh, kind of similar. Maybe it's a starting of a, a European Koine, who knows? Uh, <laughs> language. We're gonna we're gonna discover this. Um, okay. I, I just do one one question, and then I, I leave the um, to Giacomo and Fausto possibility to make others. Um, just to know uh, what, what do you expect about uh, your, the reception of your um, play in Italy because of this distance in terms of uh, culture, but. Uh, uh, of course, we are starting to be more close in uh, this uh, European field. Uh, so, uh, what, do you, what do you think about uh, the um, reception of your place? Oh, that's a difficult question because uh, it, it, um, it uh, requires me to sort of uh, view my, my own work from outside, uh, which I, I rarely try to do. Uh, it's... Um, uh, the 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 thought of uh, how uh, it uh, is viewed by others it's um, it's something I I try to avoid as much as possible and just uh, sort of uh, 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 get into to the work and try to find something that is uh, um, a challenge for myself and also interesting for myself. Uh, with this play, it's uh, also a little bit um, strange in a way because, I mean, it was written in 2004 and uh, the fall of 2004 and early 2005. So uh, I haven't I haven't actually worked on it or looked at it for a long time. So I read it again now for this conversation, and it's uh, it's a little bit um, it's like uh, a little bit like uh, watching a f uh, on uh, old pictures of yourself. Uh, 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 the the kind of writer I was at the time. Um, it's not that I've changed that much. I mean, I can see a, a consistent line in my work, but. Um, but it's still um, uh, elements that uh, that uh, is in the past uh, for me. Um, but uh, it's always really in, interesting to to meet uh, an, a new country, uh, a production in a new country, and uh, and um, I don't know how the Italian people will will take it but uh, I must say um, Giacomo sent me the pictures and uh, uh, it, it I must say the aesthetics looks really nice for this uh, production Giacomo yeah um, yes I have, uh, have uh, as he knows uh, I sometimes uh, write him messages because uh, <laughs> As, as I have been taught uh, yesterday by Maestro Paravidino, who made me a beautiful lesson via phone, uh, I finally understood the role of the, the didascalie, of the advices of the author in the book. And um, <laughs> yes, because it's really, it's really, let's say, the starting point uh, uh, for a, a dramaturg is to avoid very... Uh, bad mistakes uh, by those bad people like uh, directors that usually destroys uh, what you very carefully crafted for a, lot, a long time. But I have a, a lot, one, uh, let's say, uh, big question that really entertains me. If yeah. I'm reading all of your, of your works, I see that you, um, you use uh, uh, a lot of time this uh, third person point of view. And in Men Without Purpose, um, there is something that is not stated in the other, in the other, uh, um, in the other uh, plays that the, the characters uses this uh, third person point of view as a way to look back to them. Because uh, uh, as 
as, uh, as we know, in men without purpose, we go through 30 years more or less. So yeah. it's a big story in a very short time. Yeah. So I was, uh, I was curious to know why do you, do you use so, so constantly this third person way of having actors to look at themselves? Uh, I guess this was uh, part of my writing from the very beginning. Um, it was um, it was sort of uh, uh, the starting point from my very first play, uh, where um, I had uh, I had like uh, three plays before Man Without Purpose, and uh, from the very first I started with this. Uh, um, idea of short scenes uh, uh, abrupted with short monologues held in the third person. And I guess it was uh, the only link to other writers I can, I can think of is, is probably it was uh, inspired by uh, Brechtian uh, kind of opening up the fourth wall uh, elements. But um, uh, I did it uh, a little bit differently. It's not, it's not, um, it's not a break of the fir uh, uh, fourth wall, and then the actors are talking. It's it's the characters that are looking uh, uh, on themselves from outside. So it's it's a it's more of a meta uh, level in a sense. I call it I call it a second level, and. Um, um for me it's uh, when i write it's always I, I i kind of see where i've been and for each new play i try to um use structure or formalities or or elements like this in in slightly different ways so uh, after a while i started after this i started to uh, work with the second level, but in the first person, and uh, I started to in this in this play. I, it, in the beginning, it was only monologues, but in this play, it was also possible to have dialogues in the in the second level. Um, so uh, I don't. Uh, it, essentially, it was always about having different levels of cognit cognitive uh, uh, information on the stage at the same time. So, so uh, feelings and thoughts and, and, um, and uh, yeah, different information levels. Uh, and um, so, so that's, I think that's why it, it came about. And, and um, for the, for after this and uh, for the uh, later plays, it didn't became so uh, divided in two levels. It, I, I sort of merged the two levels. So the, 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 the second level is more emerged into the normal uh, language, but still with a certain distance within the... So it becomes sort of a... Um, a merge of the two levels. And that's where I'm at the moment, I think. Okay. And, uh, and what do you think will be in a very, very short idea, the, the, the best advice to give to an actor to play those uh, third person, uh, third person uh, lines? I guess it's, uh, um it's 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 uh maybe it's i mean it's both uh, advice for actors and directors i mean it's a, it's a combination and the uh, the director is uh, ideas of uh, of this uh, is i guess the most important thing but um it's difficult uh, i don't i don't my my philosophy about writing is that I write a piece of literature that is uh, written in in a in a genre that is 
that possibly can become theater. But I don't have a fixed idea of how each production or how a production of my plays should be because I'm not a director and I'm not a uh, actor. So I'm not, I'm not a part of the theater community uh, on a daily basis. I'm, I'm sort of like, a, I, 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 I try to write uh, texts and plays that are uh, challenging for the, for the theater community to, to dive into. And, uh, um, um, I mean, it's uh, it's of course diff obvious. Uh, I mean, you you could uh, you could um, open the fourth wall and have a direct contact with the audience. But more and more, I find it very interesting when you when when we when we oppose that and 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 try to have the the dialogue w with ourselves uh, or the, or the di the the second level dialogue uh, also with with the um, with the moment and with themselves but i mean this is this is this is uh, um uh i i have to be in the situation to be able to give uh, good advice or clear advice on this i don't have a fixed idea of how it's supposed to be I don't know if Fausto now wants to add something or to. I just to need to say hello yeah. to Fausto. Because, yeah, because uh, I, I was. I, 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 I haven't seen him in uh, twenty years, and it it was. Uh, I I just had the <laughs> best summer in uh, London of uh, the summer of two thousand. Mm -hmm. We were there for a little over a month, and uh, uh, Fausto was the first person because me and him er arrived a little bit earlier than everyone else, like a, a night before or something. So he was the first one I I met, and uh, he was a real <laughs> yes, joy <true>. to. <laughs> he was a real joy to get to know, and uh, we were a really nice uh, uh, group of people that uh, I we we have been uh, we have been um, that we know for for twenty years. So so yeah. it was yeah. <laughs> Hi Anna, good to Hi. see you again. <laughs> now you have to talk English too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Also. Uh, okay, yeah, well, I would like to talk to you a little bit uh, about these two levels uh, of, um, yeah. of dialogue, the direct dialogue to the audience uh, and, and the scene. Which one of the two, uh, in your opinion, is the first level? Because you, you, you are talking about two levels, first yeah. level, second level, but which is the level that come uh, uh, first. first and uh, and the second question but link the, the, to this one uh, do you think we are supposed we as part of the audience are supposed to trust the characters uh, when they speak uh, directly to us mm, interesting question <laughs> uh, interesting question uh, I think um, I think uh, uh, that the, the 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 level of of the real dialogue is is, is always the first level for me, and uh, and the, uh, and the, and the, and the, and and display the meta level of of the thoughts and uh, and and basically the character sees themselves from outside, so they have information that in uh, in in real life they wouldn't have in a sense so the, the hence the the meta level and um i don't i i don't i think i think the second level is more trustworthy than the first uh but i'm not quite sure because i haven't uh, it, it's a new question for me i haven't really thought about it so uh, uh but um um For instance, uh, when the main character Peter dies, he has a few sentences in the in the second level after he is dead, and yeah. uh, and um, that's that's clearly a, a like a meta level um, li um, moment. But um, 
um, yeah, I, I think I, maybe I I don't I I think it's I think the second level is um, trustworthy. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, because it is very very interesting uh, the the use uh, you make uh, of these uh, of the, such two levels. Uh, so the, the, you have uh, two different style uh, in the same uh, play that are um, yeah. very well mixed, and uh, you make the same thing uh, with, the, with the time. Uh, you don't uh, use uh, a linear time, no. So we have yeah, yeah. To, to also to follow. Uh, there is a huge game. Is uh, of course is something experimental to use a word that means nothing, but uh, uh, it is. Uh, uh, a game that the playwright makes with the, with the use of, uh, of time, a very, very sophisticated, but uh, for, uh, but it uh, also breaks the rule, the theater rule of Hickett and Nunc of making things right now. So the, the audience is a little bit displaced about the time. Yeah. No? He has forced it to, to wonder, but uh, when we are, uh, and this is interesting. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Link no, the two. Yeah, yeah this, this is interesting because uh, now I understand a little bit more what you meant in the first question. Because uh, I have worked very well, uh, much with um, in all my plays, or more and more uh, uh, in later also. Um, I, I have been working with um, with the, the power of the words in the actor's mouth, so that uh, if the actor says uh, uh, twenty minutes later, or uh, twenty days later, or twenty years later, um, it's true. It, it's true. But as an audience, this creates the, sp the space and the time. Yeah. And, yeah. and 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 they can sometimes in some of my plays they they would say that now I'm in somewhere else and then uh, it's true they are and uh, and uh, um, but and and also late in my later plays I've I've started to to work on this power of the words in the actor's mouth as as they. Uh, like one actor are playing a character, and then throughout uh, some sometimes in the play, he he or she will start to say that he is someone else, and the second person they are playing is just as true as the first. Uh, and but in in the audience mind, uh, it 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 feels not true for a couple of pages, mm -hmm. but but if you insist on 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 using the new language or using the 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 circumstances uh based in the new in the new characters it it slowly becomes true and i have this idea that as an audience uh, i like when they can't completely trust only what they see that they sort of have to uh, put layers in their minds on top of what they see, but but this is not uh, this is not as imminent in this play. This is elements that I started to work on uh, later, but uh, but it is it has the same origin um, with the structure that uh, uh, of time in 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 the second level here because if an actor says twenty years later, it it just feels. I mean, it doesn't feel true, but um, slowly over a couple of pages, if you, if all the language are pointing in the in the direction that it is true, it slowly becomes true. Yeah. So that is um, that is uh, is sort of the uh, philosophy behind uh, the uh, the those elements in my mind. I have a question also for uh, Arne. I was really uh, 
impressed about the use uh, you do about uh, the, um, you know, I, I talk about the story now, about the foundation, the settlement uh, on the fjord. Yeah. Because um, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a fan of science fiction novels, and uh, here there's not matter of science fiction, of course, but foundation, <laughs> it's a very hard topic of science fiction, like, as everybody has written uh, as the Asimov, for example, knows. Mm -hmm. And uh, because I think that uh, settlements and uh, foundation has uh, a big power inside, I mean, uh, um, exactly the, 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 uh, the same idea, the idea of foundation, because uh, it has a power to uh, make a, a, a revelation of how it's fake our society, our relationship in society, the dynamics of relationship between human beings, and uh, how much theater is in it. I mean, when I say fake, I'm, I'm not meaning it's false. Fake and false are two different layers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I think it's very, um, I mean, impressive work for this reason, because at the same time, it seems uh, to talk about uh, uh, life uh, using, using a fake situation, I mean, a foundation, uh, and it's very typical of theater. At the same time, the relationships talk, talk to us about theater because of this situation. So I want to talk, um, to ask to you, um, why do you choose this, uh, this um, you know, field of, uh, uh, of story? You mean the basic uh, uh, starting point where, where they are, so, the characters are saying, we're going to build something here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it it was funny. Um, I I was looking through my notes from uh, the 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 fall of two thousand and four, uh, and like I had a, sometimes I write or at least I did at the time I wrote a little working diary and uh, it was interesting because. The, the original idea was uh, a man dying and having someone close that uh, turned out to be a pa paid hired character, a paid hire acting, acting a friend. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, sometimes, uh, sometimes, uh, <laughs> Hello. <laughs> what a nice girl. <laughs> and and then um, and then um, some, sometimes uh, 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 when you have ideas to work, uh, sometimes one idea isn't enough. Uh, so. Uh, I read in my notes that uh, I, I, I found out that I wanted to com combine it with um, a super rich man being able to do what he wanted in a society, that he has so much power that, or money, that uh, he had power uh, beyond uh, uh, a single person. So he could... Uh, and then this uh, allegory of uh, of a of a person being able to build a whole city, which sounds stupid or strange or or um, um, or weird, but uh, in a sense, it's true uh, that super rich people can do what they want in a, in a society uh, where we. The only thing we care about is money, so um, 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 yeah, I, I just found that uh, an interesting uh, element. And then, and then later, it came other. Uh, it, it, the story grew, and then I, I, I view it as you have three, three pers uh, three uh, characters that are at uh, different levels connected with the, with the, uh, the main character. And uh, 
they are sort of res represent the three different levels of completely becoming another person because you are faking to be someone that you are not and and for the the, the character that are in that si situation for the longest time he can't go back uh when when the, when the when the circumstances changes he is stuck in in the character that he has been playing and and the and the and the woman uh, that has been there for the second longest she is sort of in a crossroad she can go both ways and of course the daughter that has only been there for a day she can for for her is nothing so so it it is a it's a uh it's a uh, it's a uh uh, allegory of of those uh, those yeah I, I forgot the word sorry yet English course, is much because uh, no, I found very very interesting the idea of the the foundation of building a, a city I thought about uh, Ibsen Ghost uh, that surrounds uh, that uh, is around uh, the foundation of of the father uh, yeah and. Uh, I, I, I think this is uh, I think this is probably m the play that I've written that is most Ibsen like in a sense. So Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> because uh because the the, the, the the foundation of the city is uh, in, in in a strong relation with the dying of a man when a man dies uh, we wonder mm. who he was and uh, what he built. Yeah. So, so we we start with the with the with the big thing uh, he was trying to do, and uh, in the second half uh, it jumps out uh, a daughter that uh, we we didn't know. So it's uh, a bit like if we thought that he thought that he was the man who built the foundation, uh, built the city, but actually he wasn't. He wasn't the man who had a daughter. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some way. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, we we stopped talking about the the, the the foundation of the city in uh, in the second half of the play. Nobody yeah. cares about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is. Uh, it is. Uh, I mean, it 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 goes very quickly <laughs> in the in the. I mean, it goes. The, the time goes by quickly uh, in the, in the in the in the three acts. Yeah. Yeah, you have a kind. Of, yeah, you have a kind of a time span that is getting reduced uh, act by act. No, so it seems that you have a kind of a, since the third person is always in the past, it, it, it makes reference. You have the feeling that the third person is in the present, more or less. And yeah, everything that we see of the first level is more or less like archive footage. Like if it were, uh, this is kind of a interesting paradox. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe it's. Uh, I guess the, I guess the 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 second level has the the elements of uh, of the um, the prosaic uh, view of uh, mm -hmm. uh, of the um, uh, of the narrative, like uh, and uh, and. Uh, there is a break in each uh, in each uh, act, uh, and uh, in, in the first it's twenty years, then it's twenty days, and then it's twenty minutes. So it's the time is sort of narrowing in. But um, it's interesting. I've I've never thought of because you are you are basically referencing back to 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 the other uh, question about which level is is mm. is the is the true level but um mm -hmm. uh, but uh, yeah it's um I, 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 yeah i don't i i don't know how i i don't remember how i thought about that actually yeah but uh, i i'm uh, very when graziano mentioned the science fiction i was the, i have to confess that uh, i i always thought about very different uh, 
science fiction topics uh, very classical because uh, you can uh, read uh, the uh, even more than Asimov, not only as Asimov, but uh, for example, there is one essay by Philip Dick that I don't remember the, the, the English translation in which he speaks about two kind of times, two kinds of times. One is the linear times and one is the orthogonal time in which, uh, and uh, this, for example, uh, uh, when I read your play, it made me thought about this kind of uh, uh, Dickian re reference, no? in which Phil Dick makes this kind of uh, difference of uh, perception of himself in the time and the perception of the events outside of you, that's kind of now a classical topic, of course, uh, because of relativity. But uh, so it's, uh, it's tricky, but I think it's uh, one of the most uh, fascinating stuff to deal with time and to lose completely the control of that. Because when, he, when we try to, to follow in a very regular way, we are stuck and we are completely lost. I would say. <laughs> so, so yeah, I don't know. I haven't. Uh, I haven't. Uh, I haven't uh, um, really uh, the same references to the science fiction. But uh, but of course it is. Uh, it is. It it has this uh, elements of of uh, hyperfiction or or heightened uh, heightened uh, reality in a in a sense that. Uh, um uh, that uh, uh, there are elements that seems unreal and it's only real if you insist on it and then if you insist on the words of of this reality it can become true in the minds of the audience so i guess that yeah because the the notion that someone can just build a city is uh, in 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 a, in a desolated fjord is uh, is uh, strange but i guess someone could i mean they just need a lot of money and then get other people with a lot of money and start building houses and building a square and building a industry and then it can be done yeah but and uh, you mentioned him before, and I, and, and and we have sorry. a lot. Of, uh, sorry, and we have a lot of uh, we have a lot of desolated fjords in in Norway. So yeah, yeah. Uh, I I was going to ask you about the fjords because I was really uh, I've never been in Norway, so uh, for me it was kind of a complete uh, let's say fictional space uh, just uh, watching and just imagining. But I am very curious because you mentioned him before. What's your relationship with Ibsen? Is kind of a DNA author that you have to face every time when you write, or is the first one that you kill when you it, start writing? Or it, it was basically the first one you killed because it was impossible in the 90s in in Norway to to write on the on the shoulders of Ibsen because he was just everywhere you would mm. you would sort of see uh uh each play uh for four or five times in a period of of a few word, years because he is uh, at least the the, the most uh, known plays are are played constantly and uh, uh, so for me it was important just to push him away and not think about it because you could be met with uh i i remember i had a like a a reaction from one of the actors on my first little play that i i i showed on the festival in in 96 just a couple of years after i started writing and he it, the festival went very well and it was a big success and stuff but uh, the the actor said to the director but we should tell him this is not this is not uh, playwriting uh, because it's not ibsen in a sense <laughs> so uh, wow. uh, so uh, um uh, so 
of course, um, later that uh, you you could like for for instance with this play you can see that there are elements that could be inspired by by it, but then it's subconsciously, and one really. Uh, um, um, strong influence, I think, of uh, growing up in a society or a theater community where we have one big uh, writer is that you got used to a play being um, the foundation for a production, that the play wasn't a production, that that it, it was about writing something that could inspire director and theater people to, to make their own artwork. Because each production of an Ibsen play in, in, nine, in the 90s and 2000 was very different because uh, they, have been, they had been played, uh, of course, for 70 years, uh, very close to how it was written. But uh, in the 90s, they, we have seen them so many times, so everyone started to, to, to sort of more and more make their own versions of them, and um, I think that is, um, I think that was a valuable lesson actually, uh, uh, towards uh, the, the writing, mm. and also when I, uh, yeah. Um, when I grew up, uh, it, it was, or in, in the beginning, like in the 2000s, we also had uh, another uh, um, writer, Jon Fosse, coming up in, in Norway, and he, he sort of exploded and, and, and was played a lot in the, in the 2000s. So it, it was these two major uh, writers in this small uh, country. I want to do another, maybe the last question. We talk uh, a lot about your play, but um, it's a question for you, Arne, and even for Fausto, uh, because it's about uh, playwright uh, generally, not only about your work, because Fausto said uh, something that is very interesting to me. He said that we are, we are writing in a different country, one from the north and the other one from the south of Europe. Uh, but uh, I found, uh, Fausto says, some common part in our writings, some, something common. So both of you are famous abroad and uh, other country uh, put on stage your, your uh, plays. Uh, but you, you write in your own language and uh, both of your languages are, uh, you know, uh, it's just spoken in your country, Norway and, yeah. uh, and Italy. Yeah. And uh, I, do you think about, uh, you know, uh, a broad audience when you, when you write? Do you think uh, your language is going to be starting to change thinking in a common European space or not? <laughs> it's for both of you. Fausto first, as I just told. Ah, gosh. Uh, well, uh, after we spent our time together in London, <laughs> uh, of course, I started uh, for, for a little period, uh, I, I started writing uh, in Italian, but thinking about uh, English actors, uh, British actors, or a British audience. So I tried, I started writing uh, in in a way that it, that could be easily translated uh, <laughs> under the aspect of the language and uh, also of the situation because uh, I was very very before I was very very influenced by Harold Pinter by British playwrights so I thought that uh, what I wrote was absolutely international uh, or at least uh, good for a British audience when I worked there, I discovered that, that, that what I wrote was typically Italian. Uh, and yeah. it, it was really surprising for me because I, I just thought I, 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 I belonged to the international theater community, not to, um, to Italy. And, uh, but that, that, that was uh, why we loved you because you were you were Italian in all. So typically all, Italian. <laughs> <laughs> you were in all aspects of the word. 
he he was the most popular uh, person on the whole 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 uh, <laughs> of the whole twenty five per- persons. Yeah, because I did the uh, Italian stuff, <laughs> <laughs> so popular Italian stuff. Yeah, but I. I I thought I was British. Uh, I'm uh, the most Brit of the Italian. And uh, well, no, I don't uh, write uh, thinking about translations. I, I, I check, I, I help translators uh, from Italian to French because I, I speak some French and, uh, and I work uh, with them. Otherwise, no, I just write uh, in Italian, uh, thinking uh, uh, about the the situation, uh, and, uh, and, but uh, yes, if even if uh, theater is very very linked to the country of of the playwright, uh, I'm typically Italian, uh, even if I I, I don't feel uh, so. Uh, but at the same time, the, the theater language is is international because the stage yeah. is the stage, and the actor represent the human beings, uh, even if they come from cultural, uh, very very different uh, situation. And uh, the audience, when I saw my place put on stage abroad, I, I even if even when. They are more Italian, more typically Italian than uh, other times. I see that the, the audience reacts, uh, international audience reacts in, in the same way and uh, in the same parts, uh, with, in the same lines uh, of the play. A line that makes people laugh in Italy, makes laugh uh, in England, uh, in France, uh, in Germany. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I would say basically the same thing that uh, for me it's, uh, it's, it's, the language I write in is really important. I, I, I it's, it, it's almost like I, I never write like uh, ideas for where the where the piece will go. I, I it's always just a, um, um, uh, a diving into the language. Each each line build up uh, slowly, line by line, and and then I sort of see where the play takes me. So. In that sense, my own language is all that matters. What what I, how imaginative I I I, how I. It it's all it always has to be, um, interesting lines that I want to work on the next day, to to move on. So I never think other languages in in when I when I write, but. I think I have elements in my aesthetics uh, that is that makes it easy to translate because I I, I never use I, I like to to work on a very minimalistic level and I don't like to I, I like to use the essential words. I, I like to use the word car, not a not a uh not a BMW. I, I like to just use the the bare essentials to to project something and uh, that makes uh, sometimes the, i think that makes the play easy to 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 travel to other countries the only thing i i can't say that i'm doing is that when i have an idea for a title or when i'm working to find the title i don't like I, I like the titles to be easily translated to, and then I check with uh, like the English title and the German title and the French <laughs> title and the, it's a, like different titles in diff- how the title will translate because I hate it when, uh, when they have to find a completely different title in another language. I don't like that. So, so, and, uh, and um, after, like I have a really strong connection with uh, the, uh, Stefan Braunschweig in, in Paris. And, and basically uh, when I write, he is one of the first one to, to get an idea of what I'm writing. And sometimes I, I translate just on my own English pages for him, just so that he get an idea of what I'm doing. So, so there is a, 
there is a clear contact to towards other countries and theaters in other countries from uh, yeah but uh, uh, um, for me everything started in uh, in um, in in L london was the first trip and then i was invited to a festival in in italy the the i think it was the same it was the, it was the same it was the same summer and in, in the festival in France, I get uh, I got uh, contacts with Germany, and then it it moved on from there. In a way, even if uh, uh, I think, uh, as you said, Arne, a language is the first country for a, a playwright, of course. Uh, our, uh, our the international space is starting to. Uh, you know, to be a field for everybody, because as you said, uh, you have your relationship with, with Braunschweig, so um, it's something that uh, come to him and, and came back. So uh, uh, the common space is starting to grow up, I think, just for this uh, way of production of your plays, of Fausto plays, and, uh, and it's going to be interesting, I think. So, uh, Thank you very much. I think we had a very great conversation. Thank you, Arne. Thank you, Fausto. Uh, Giacomo, of course. And uh, we hope to, to, to know more plays of you uh, as soon as possible in Italy. Thank you very much. Thank you. This was uh, great seeing you all. Good luck with everything. Great.